Hey everyone, welcome to episode 8 of What's Up Biscot Yarns with Julie. I am Julie. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. And if this is your first time here, welcome. In this space, we talk about the good stuff that's available at Biscot Yarns, both online at biscotyarns.com as well as in our physical stores. I am filming from our store in North Vale, New Jersey, which is northern part of Bergen County. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about sweaters, shawls, socks, oh my. But to start the program off, I'm going to talk about something that we seldom discuss in these episodes. Um, we usually talk about knitting projects, but today I want to start with something that is crocheted for our friends with the hooks. Um, here in my hand, we have a cute little cardigan that is crocheted. It is called the Rainbow Spring Fresh Cardigan. The name of this uh, sweater is very apt. It is very fresh looking, very spring. Uh, this was designed by uh, Sierra Doyle and she had sized it um, pretty wide range from a size 2T to a size 12. And the sample I'm holding is the smallest one. It is size two. Uh, the construction of this cardigan is from the collar down and the sweater is constructed like in a raglan style as you may see. So um, what's unique about the construction of the collar is that, um, I'll hold it up, so you see like this is one motif, this is like one petal, and then you would uh, not knit but crochet seven of these individually and then you would take four of those seven pieces when you're done uh, and put them together in a semicircle. And then the remaining three pieces, you would lay them on top so that it creates this little like layering effect you see here. So I'm gonna flip the layered on here. Ah, can I hold these together? So, no, I can't, I'm awkward. Okay, so here, let's try this. So you see down here, these are like from the semicircle, and then these are the pieces that are laid on top, overlapping, right? I hope that shows a little bit better. Um, so that's how you construct the collar, uh, the seven little pieces, and then you put them together, and then you start um, uh, creating the raglan shoulder top, and then you would crochet your, your piece down. Um, it is crocheted in the flat, right? Because it's a cardigan, it's not steeped. So you would do it back and forth. Um, and then you get to the bottom, you would do uh, the contrasting color uh, with the hem. And then when you are done with the body, you would pick up stitches and knit the sleeves in the round. Now you don't just go round and round and round, um, but you do have to turn the work as you knit in the round. When you're done with the first round, for example, you're gonna have to turn it and uh, round back the other way because that will keep the crochet stitches consistent with the body because the body, remember how it was uh, worked flat back and forth. So the stitches uh, pattern, the pattern of the stitch is going to present itself differently if you were to knit the same stitch in the continuous round without turning it, then if you were to, I said knit, didn't I? I'm so sorry, I meant crochet. Uh, <laughs> uh, then if you were to crochet it flat. Um, so anyway, you and then you make the two sleeves and then again, color change to get to the cuffs. Uh, and then lastly, you would pick up stitches um, along the two edges for the button bands and then you would sew on the buttons. And here is this really cute piece. Again, it's called the Rainbow Spring Fresh Cardigan. Now, which awesome Biscot Yarns yarns are you gonna use to create this piece? Well, funny you asked. Um, we are going to be using the DK Pure. Can I hold it up like this? Here are the three colorways. Uh, we have the main color, which is uh, lemonade, uh, translated to lemonade. And then the two contrasting color is this pink one, which is strawberries. And then the green one is there, which is just green. Um, 
the contrasting color you're only going to need one skein each and depend oh, sorry the contrasting color you're going to need one skein each um, but for the main color uh, you're going to need more uh, from two to six skeins depending on the size that you are crocheting uh, DK Pure is uh, comprised of 90% superwash merino and 10% silk. Um, to make this cardigan, you are going to need a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook or US size 7. And speaking of US, uh, I wanted to point out that the pattern instruction is written in the US crochet terminology. Um, and the gauge you should uh, be getting, I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth here. So 4.5 millimeter hook, US size seven um, uh, translation, and the gauge for this is 17 stitches and 14 rows should buy you four inch square. Sorry, 15 rows should buy you a four inch square. Um, so that's this. So the second thing I wanted to talk about today is socks. This one is called the Water Slide Sock. It's knitted with two contrasting colors. Um, the first one from two different lines. Um, the first one is the main color is from Patrick Knits. And this is in the colorway whatever. Um, I don't know why they named it that, but I think this is anything but whatever. I think this is beautiful. The, the way they dyed the yarn is anything but. Don't you agree? It's beautiful. I think it should be called beautiful, not whatever. <laughs> um, and then the contrasting uh, is from our Biss Sock yarn uh, line, and it's vanilla. All right, uh, and uh, by the way, both of, the, of, the, of these yarns, it's made up of 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon. Okay, so these socks, uh, the water slide socks, uh, is uh, constructed from the cuff down. The cuff, as you can see, is a very basic uh, two by two ribbing, knit to purl two. You do about one and a half inches of that, uh, or however you like, but in this model, it's one and a half inches. You start doing the leg part. Now notice how the back of it is just plain stockinette stitch. So all you do is knit in the round but the interest is in the front, uh, where there is a simple lace pattern that goes all the way to right above the toe. Uh, so you work your way down, and then when you get to heel, um, it's your classic uh, heel flap. So you do the flap, and then you do the heel turn, gusset, whole nine yards, and then you continue on with the foot part, and then you would uh, change to the contrasting color to do your toe decreases, and then you are done. Now, um, something that's a little bit different I find with this pattern compared to all the ones that I have been talking about in the previous seven episodes is that this lace pattern comes written in, in the written form only. There is not a, uh, a chart. So for those who likes to read chart, you know, you, you are warned. But looking at this, if, you, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see the lace pattern. It's really intricate, but it's not tricky. You know, I, I think after a couple of pattern repeats, you're just going to see it and understand it and be able to zip through it relatively uh, reasonably quickly. So I don't think it's a big deal that there is no chart uh, for this pattern, but um, the instruction, the written instruction is row by row or round by round, uh, nice and clear. Uh, in terms of the gauge for this project, uh, you should be getting nine stitches to an inch if you are using the US size one or 2.25 millimeter uh, knitting needles. Um, and if you need to adjust your needle size, of course, do whatever you need to do. So as long as you get the nine, inch, uh, nine stitches to an inch. Next up, we're gonna talk about the sweater that I'm wearing. It is called the Notre Dame de Paris, designed by our very own Louise Roberts. She designed this back in 2019 to pay tribute to the victims from the fire in Notre Dame. The yarn used to make this sweater is from our DK Pure line that we just talked about not too long ago. And there are three different colorways used to make this sweater. Um, there are different colorways available as kits on our website, so if this is not really your jam, there are other options uh, that you can choose from. 
or because we have such a big catalog of colors uh, for this line uh, of yarn, you could totally pick and choose your own color uh, that speaks to you. Uh, let's talk about the gauge and the sizes uh, before we talk about the construction of the sweater. Uh, so to make meet gauge, uh, which is six stitches to an inch, we have used US size six knitting needles and that's four millimeters. Um, and the sizes available for this pattern ranges from 35 and a half stitches around to 55 inches and there are nine sizes um, available. Uh, so that's pretty size inclusive. And now the construction of the sweater, uh, it is knitted in the round from the bottom up. And I'll stand up to show you the hem. Uh, to make the hem, uh, this is faux cabling. We have used uh, knitting needles that are two sizes smaller, so that would make it a US four. And after you're done with the length of the hem, you will switch to the larger knitting needles and then just knit around and around. And that will create this flat stockinette stitch, nice and basic, until you reach the underarm. And that's where you split for top and uh, front and back, not top and bottom, front and back. And that's where the color work commences. And the color work uh, goes all the way around, front and back. Um, and then you would finish off uh, the shoulder, the uh, the neckline and and then uh, you pick up stitches on the arm hole and then you would knit down and then create your cuff for the sleeves. Uh, now the pattern had budgeted yarn for a three quarter length sleeve and this one lands like right above my elbow. Um, but I personally see this design uh, that would work really well if it was knitted in full long sleeve. So um, if that's what you prefer because you wanted it to wear, uh, you know, when the weather is a little bit cooler, uh, you could totally do that. I think it will really work well as well. But of course, if you're gonna do that, then you're gonna wanna pick up, you know, one or two more skeins of the main color uh, so that you have enough yarn to do both sleeves. Last but not least, let's talk about this shawl that's here to my left on the mannequin. It is called Zigging the Zag. When I first saw it, I thought, ooh, cool, another crochet piece for me to talk about because this totally reminds me of like, was it from the 70s where it was really popular for people to crochet like those chevron uh, pattern throws for their homes? But this is not, this is actually knitted. Uh, it was knitted with uh, two of our uh, different lines of yarn, uh, one from the Louise Robert collection, her Super Sock, and here they are. Uh, Super Sock is comprised of 75% Super Wash Merino and 25% of nylon. And the other component is from our Hermione line, and Hermione is 75% kit mohair and 25% silk. Uh, the gauge to this uh, shawl is seven stitches to an inch using uh, size five US five knitting needles. And I think that's 3.75 millimeters. Um, although because this is a shawl, it doesn't really matter that much uh, what gauge you get. But of course, um, it might matter when you are running really low uh, on yarn. So you got to budget accordingly if you do get a different gauge than what is prescribed in the pattern. Uh, the wingspan of the shawl runs 96 inches wide and the deepest part in the middle is 21 inches. And then really quickly, here's the back view of the shawl. Um, you can see from the back here, uh, measuring from the nape of the neck to the pointy part uh, by where the hip would be, that's 21 inches. So that's pretty good coverage, right? And then if you check out the pointy part here, um, what I had done was to simply like drape the other side of the wing over the front uh, onto the shoulder here. Um, and this is where it falls. So if it were on a person, I would think that it would fall to like around where the hip is. And of course, all that depends on, you know, how tall you are and how thick of a layering you are wearing, etc., etc. This is the end of episode eight. Thank you so, so much for staying with us to this point. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, we would love to hear from you. So if you wanna drop us a note, please do so in the comment down below. 
And if you are going to work on any projects that we talked about today or any of our yarns, please post them on your Instagram and hashtag Biscott Yarns so that we can follow along. Until next time, happy crafting! Mm -hmm.